Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India NPTEL course Environmental Chemistry and Microbiology. I am Professor Anjali Pal from Civil Engineering Department. I am covering the Environmental Chemistry part and this is my third lecture on acids, bases and salts. And in this lecture I will cover mainly the buffer, the mechanism of buffer action and how to select the buffer. Buffer you know buffer is very very important uh, in chemistry in maintaining the pH. It is often required to carry out experiments in solution of steady pH. It is very useful in analytical chemistry as well as in biochemistry and bacteriology. If I tell you, I will tell you some question here. What is that question? Say for example, I have a solution of 0 0.001 molar HCl and it is stored in an open glass vessel. So, I have named it as solution A. I have kept it stored for quite some time say for example, 7 days. Then I measure the pH after 7 days. So, what should be the pH of that solution? I have already told you about the pH, I have given the concept of pH that pH is nothing but the minus log of hydrogen ion concentration. And I already told you that HCl is a strong electrolyte that means, it will dissociate 100 percent. If that is the case, then the pH of the solution that is solution A, if I calculate it, it is nothing but 1 into 10 to the power minus 3 minus log of 1 into 10 to the power minus 3 which is nothing but 3. That means, pH will be 3, but after 7 days also will that pH be 3? It is kept in a open glass vessel that is the question will it be 3 or it will differ. Same way 0 0.001 molar NaOH, if it is stored in an open glass vessel, it is called solution B and if it is stored for 7 days, what should be the pH? If we directly calculate it, then pOH will be minus log of 1 into 10 to the power minus 3. So, pOH will be 3, that means pH is 14 minus 3 that is 11, but is that correct just direct calculation will give me the pH or it will be different something else that is the question. The pH of the acid or alkali slowly changes and never gives a steady value. Why it is changing? Because first thing sometimes the glass vessel depending on the glass vessel sometimes from glass vessel if it is alkaline glass some alkali may come out. So, if you keep some acid solution that alkali will react with the acid and it will give different pH value. Sometimes in the atmosphere because it is open glass vessel. So, sometimes from the atmosphere 
carbon dioxide may come, ammonia may come and it can dissolve in the water. So, it has the effect and it will change the pH. That means, pH will not be a constant with time it will change that is why they are not primary standard or secondary primary standard. So, what do we know about primary standard and secondary standard? We know primary standard is something which we can weigh accurately which is not hygro hygroscopic which we can accurately measure take the weight and also if we prepare the solution we can keep it stored for long period of time that is primary standard. Strength is known strength will not change with time, but for secondary standard we know with time it may change the weight also we cannot take it properly like this. So, in the case of HCl and NOH that we have prepared you know in the glass vessel is not a primary standard because pH is changing. Now, here comes the function of buffer before going to that I have two more questions. What is the pH of 0 0.001 molar NaCl solution? If I call it solution C, then what is the pH? And what is the pH of 0 0.001 molar ammonium acetate solution? If we call it solution D, stored in an open glass vessel. This is very simple, you will know that sodium chloride solution has the pH 7, it is neutral solution. So, it is 7 and what about this? Okay, for, a, for, for today you think that the pH is say x, I have not calculated it say it is x. Now, now another question is coming, if we add 1 milliliter of 1 molar HCl to 1 liter solution of C that means sodium chloride solution what should be the pH? Initially it was 7 because it is sodium chloride solution. Now I am adding 1 milliliter 1 molar HCl to 1 liter of this solution. What should be the pH? It is easy because 1 milliliter 1 molar now it is 1 liter. So, volume is increased 1000 times and the so concentration will decrease 1000 times. So, now it will be the HCl concentration will be how much? It will be 10 to the power minus 3 that means pH will be 3, but if we add same volume same concentration that HCl if we add in 1 liter of solution D then what? should we see any change or we should not see any change that is the question. Here we see change, here initially it was 7, but now it is 3, huge change, but here what will happen? Here say for example, I told you that ammonium acetate solution it has the pH say x. Now, whether after addition of 1 milliliter HCl, 1 milliliter 1 molar HCl, what would be the pH? that is the question. Now, a solution of known pH which resists change in pH when a little acid or alkali is added or when the solution is diluted is known the buffer solution. So, buffer solution is a solution some solution will which will resist the change of pH means when you add HCl it is supposed that it is known that the it is expected that the pH will change, but if you use buffer or if you add some HCl or NaOH to that buffer solution, the pH will not change that is called the buffer action and the solution is called buffer solution. Okay. Here in this case the, the solution D which is ammonium acetate it is a buffer solution. So, when you add 1 molar HCl, 1 milliliter 1 molar HCl to this solution, this is ammonium acetate solution, pH will not change much because very slight change may happen, but not much, not like this, this one, not like the solution C. So, 
solution C has changed a lot, but here it may have changed, but very light change, slight change. So, this that is why it is called a buffer solution and it is called a the buffer action. This has enormous application in analytical chemistry, environmental chemistry, many process engineering. So, we have to know how it acts and what is the mechanism. Now, buffer solution, what is the buffer? Usually, if we see the composition, then we will see the buffer solution may have may be two types acid buffer and alkaline buffer. And if it is acidic buffer, then it is a mixture of weak acid and its salt. Example, acetic acid and sodium acid. So, it is a mixture of two things. One is the weak acid and another is the its salt. Okay. So, if it is weak acid is acetic acid, then it is uh, another thing should be there that is its salt that is the sodium acetate. And if it is a alkaline buffer, then it should be a weak base and its salt. Example, ammonium hydroxide and ammonium chloride or it can be a salt of weak acid and weak base. Just previous slide we have seen that ammonium acetate, ammonium acetate is nothing but a salt of weak acid and weak base. So, that is also that is also a buffer. Now, if I consider the acid buffer then consider a solution of a mixture of acetic acid of concentration this way we write the concentration right within the third bracket. So, this is the concentration of acetic acid and the concentration of sodium acetate is this one, where sodium acetate is complete we know that salt is completely ionized either it may be a salt of strong acid weak base or weak acid strong base whatever may be salt will be completely ionized. So, sodium acetate will be completely ionized and acetic acid which is a weak acid will be partially ionized partially ionized ok. Then we can see what will happen hence the acetate ion that is present in the medium the mixture of acetic acid and sodium acetate we can tell that the acetate ion concentration present in the solution is the total sodium acetate concentrate because the dissociation of acetic acid is very less compared to the dissociation of sodium acetate. Sodium acid fully dissociated. So, mo most contribution is coming from the sodium acetate okay. and we can write the acetate and concentration is nothing but the concentration of the salt. So, because it is a weak acid we must consider the equilibrium. So, H acid which is acetic acid is nothing but H plus ion into acetate ion. Okay. And K A that is the equilibrium constant is nothing but H plus ion concentration into acetate ion concentration by H A C concentration. And if we just um, change the sides by by changing the sides of H plus in left hand side then we will get this equation H plus ion concentration is nothing but K A into H A C concentration by acetate ion concentration or K into acid concentration by salt concentration. Now, if we take into logarithm term then minus log of H plus ion concentration minus log of K which is nothing but P K A and minus log of H plus concentration is nothing but P H. So, P H is becoming P K A plus log salt this will be just reversed. So, salt by acid this is known this is known as the Henderson equation. This is a very important expression for a buffer solution. pH of a buffer is in case of acidic buffer pH of a buffer is nothing but p k a what is p k is the the p k of that particular acid plus log salt concentration by acid concentration and this is Henderson equation. Now, the buffer buffer capacity. So, I told you if you remember that buffer action will be uh, remaining in a in some range it is not the whole range of pH it will not act in that way not only that buffer only can resist the change 
when slight amount little amount of acid or alkali is added. It is not like you will add in 1 liter of buffer solution if you add say 100 milliliter of strong acid solution then buffer then the pH will be uh, unchanged it is not like that. Small amount of acid or small amount of base if you uh, add to the buffer solution or to a solution which contains buffer then the change of pH will be uh, uh, will be uh, not there means it will resist the change ok. This is very important. So, buffer capacity is very important buffer capacity is maintained for mixtures ranging what is the range we have seen in the last slide that P pH is equals to pKa plus log salt by acid this proportion is very important. So, buffer capacity is maintained for a mixtures ranging 10 salt is to 1 acid or 1 salt is to 10 acid that means 10 is to 1 or 1 is to 10 for salt and acid that ratio that means pH is nothing but pKa plus minus 1 because log term is there. So, that is why it is coming plus minus 1. So, this is called buffer capacity that means in that range of pH say for example, acetic acid if we think about acetic acid we know I already told you that for acetic acid pKa is 4.74. So, for example, so pH is equal to 4.74 plus minus 1. So, it will be within the range of 3.74 to 5.74 in that range it will be valid it is not like the whole range of pH it will be valid. Now, why it is happening how it is resisting the pH that is also very interesting and important. So, mechanism of buffer action I have already told you that in the acidic buffer what is there acetate ion is there. So, when you add the H plus ion it will immediately combine with acetate ion to form the undissociated, undissociated HAC molecule. If you add little amount of alkali then it will react with the HAC to form the acetate ion and water. In this way the addition of H plus of course, small amount or OH minus will be will be uh, will will be consumed in some way and it will keep the pH of the medium almost constant it is not exactly constant it is almost constant very small change you will observe you will observe small change not significant small change you will observe. Similarly, for a buffer mixture alkaline buffer I have taken the simple example ammonia and ammonium chloride. For ammonia and ammonium chloride it is an alkaline buffer we can tell that ammonia hydroxide will be dissociated it is weakly basic solution. So, it will be dissociated in ammonium ion and OH minus ion. So, we have to consider K B in this case K B is equals to ammonium ion concentration by OH into OH minus ion concentration by ammonium hydroxide concentration. So, changing the slides uh, we will get this equation and ammonium ion concentration is the total ammonium chloride because the contribution of ammonium ion from the ammonium hydroxide very small compared to this one that is why ammonium ammonium ion concentration is mostly from the salt. So, it is the salt concentration and which minus concentration here the same equation as we applied similar not same uh, equation that we applied for an acid in this case it is the um, uh, in terms of KB it will come and in terms of POH it will come. So, POH equals to PKB plus log salt by base this is also Henderson equation and the mechanism will also be same way as uh, it has been explained in case of uh, acid ok. If you add acid H plus then what will happen and if you add which minus slightly a slight amount or um, small concentration small amount then what will happen this will be very similar to this one. Now, buffer solution you know buffer solution uh, the, the natural buffer in biological systems you know in body there is also some buffer you know in our body system also uh, you see that many reactions are happening enzymatic reactions are happening they need controlled pH in our system in our body the control pH is very much necessary, but here we are not 
we do not have any ammonium chloride, ammonium hydroxide, or we do not have acetic acid and sodium acetate. In the biological system, mostly it is carbonate buffer or phosphate buffer. We know that blood pH is 7.4 approximately. Now, one application of buffer solution, you have already those who are from chemistry background or who are from environmental engineering back background, we all do the hardness determination, right. And in the hardness determination, we always use a buffer. If you remember, what is that buffer? That buffer is the ammonium chloride, ammonium hydroxide buffer. And why it is used? It is used because we need to keep the pH in the range of 9 to 10, so that the reaction is complete. Okay. If the pH is not maintained, then the reaction will not be complained and the determination of hardness that is calcium ion concentration and magnesium ion concentration that is mul that um, multivalent cation concentration by EDTA. You know the determination in the determination we use the EDTA solution and in that uh, titration um, if the pH is not maintained in that range then the reaction will not be complete. Now, how to design a buffer? This is a very important thing how to design a buffer. To design a buffer, we have given a one example here. To design a buffer, say I need a buffer solution, I need to keep the pH in this range. So, I need a buffer solution for of pH 4.60. Now, there are so many buffers, we can choose different acids, we can choose different uh, bases, we can choose different uh, salts also. How we can decide which one we will use for our purpose? Okay. Now, if we see that if we are to de dis, uh, uh, design a buffer of pH 4.6, first we have to see which acid we will take, because it is acidic buffer we, in, we, in, we have seen, this is the uh, below pH 7, so it is acidic buffer. Now, pKa, because uh, the pKa values or K values of each acids means uh, the weak acids are only state. Okay, at 25 degree centigrade. So, we can easily find out. So, pKa of acetic acid we know 4.74 or 7.5 and then plus minus 1 the buffer capacity is plus minus 1. So, if we go plus 1 or minus 1 uh, of this 4.75 value then it will it will remain in this range is not it 4.6 will remain in this range. So, we can tell that this buffer is suitable for this one for our purpose. Now, what will be the? So, we know the pKa value, but what should be the salt that ratio that acid and salt ratio okay, that you have to decide. Now, here you see the if you remember the Henderson equation, then we will see that this this is the term that we have to decide. Now, pKa minus pH is 4.75 minus 4.60 because we want a pH of 4.60. So, 4.75 is the pKa value minus 4.60 is equal to 0.15. So, this ratio should be 1.4, 1.4, okay. 1 log this is the log term na. If you remember the if you remember the Henderson equation, then there it is the log concentration of salt by acid. This is this one. Now, what is the just ratio not here log term is not there. Okay. So, concentration of acid by concentration of salt this should be 1.4. To design a buffer of our purpose pH 4.60 the ratio will be 1.4. So, we can choose the ratio, we can choose the concentrations, but only thing the ratio should be 1.4. It may be you see we can do by choosing sodium acetate 1 and uh, acetic acid, sodium acetate 0.1 and acetic acid 0.14 or we can choose 0.2 mole, mole of sodium acetate and 0.28 mole of acetic acid, we can dissolve it in 1 liter. So, concentration will be like this molar. Now, here you see the ratio is coming, here also the ratio is coming. So, 
So, you can choose either one this combination or this combination even you can try other combinations also. I think you have understood this part because first you have to see that which buffer we have to take which combination and then we have to decide what is the concentration that we have to take for the salt and the acid. Thank you, thank you for uh, listening to today's lecture. I hope you have understood. Thank you.